Jesus. We are victorious in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice. you now. Turn up your TVs, clap your hands, grab your tambourine, shout to the Lord.
rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, No. 
seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen, 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 amen. Throwback Sunday. Throwback, boy, do you remember? You remember back then? Remember Mahalia Jackson? It started there. Kurt Franklin, Melodies of Heaven, in Maverick City. But I'm going to take you back. Remember when we was poor? And you, didn't, and you couldn't afford a stopper in your bathtub. You had to put a towel in there to keep the, you remember, Bishop. Come on now. Don't. <laughs> remember when you, your mama cooked that good grease, I mean that good fish? What did she do with the grease? She put it in that Folger can and set it on the stove, right? I remember back then. Remember that? Amen. Remember when you had to take a bath with that dishwashing liquid and you was, whoo. You was white afterwards, right? But you see the evolution, right? We went from sharing baths with each other with your brothers and sisters. Then you grew up. Then you were able to take your own bath. But you stopped using that type of liquid soap that they use in the sink and that, that white powder. And now you're able to buy zest, dial, and, and all that, those loofahs and all that type of stuff. But you see the evolution? But let me tell you one thing. Jesus never changed. Jesus is the same today, 
yesterday and forevermore. That's the God that we serve. So remember when you prayed yesterday and asked God to fix something in your life? He still remember that today. It didn't change. God is not deaf. God hears you. But he still wants to have a relationship with you. In spite of your circumstances and situation, God is still there. He has never changed. He will never leave you, nor will he forsake you. All you have to do is call on the name of the Lord. And so I'm here to pray for those that are in a need right now. Medical issues, if you have something that you need prayer for, just raise your hand so our ministers can see you. Somebody that needs prayer, ministers, look around so we can touch and agree with those that are in need right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come to you right now, God. With our hands lifted right now, our hands lifted is a sign of surrender. We surrender to you right now, Father God. Lord, we reach out to you, Lord, so you can extend your hand to us and pull us up right now, Lord. Lord, we're going to make our prayers and requests known to you right now, Father God. Whatever that need is, whether it be a medical need, whether it be a mental need, whether it's a financial need, whether it's a job, whether it's somebody that's incarcerated, God, we need you right now to step in, Father God. Lord, we ask that you just rain down on us and let your melodies from heaven rain down on us. Let your prayers and healings rain down on us. When praises go up, blessings come down. When praises go up, healings come down. When praises go up, prosperity come down. Lord, we calling out to you, Lord. We lifting you up right now, God. We lift your name on high right now in the name of Jesus, God. Lord, we ask that you just strengthen us where we're weak right now, Father God. Lord, allow us to stand up again when we're lame, Father God. Lord, give us sight where we're blind, Lord. Lord, we ask that you just forgive us for our sins that we've committed, Father God. Sins known and unknown, Father God. Lord, we just ask that you just cover us right now. Cover us with your love. Cover us with your courage. Lord, cover us with your strength right now, Lord. Lord, we shabak you right now in the name of Jesus. We shabak you right now in the name of Jesus. We shabak you right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, you're worthy of all the praise, God. Lord, you're worthy of all the honor, God. Lord, we adore you right now, Father God. Lord, we thank you right now. Lord, we ask that you just cover right now. Cover with your blood. Lord, we ask that you just do away with the enemy, Lord. Because we know the enemy is there to kill, steal, and destroy, Father God. Lord, but you reign over everything, Father God. Lord, we thank you for the past. Lord, we thank you for the present. And we thank you for the future. In Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's people said, amen, amen. I'm going to ask you to stand one more time to your feet if you're able. This is between you and him time. This is give back to him time. This song says, fill me up. And my prayer, what would it be like in Corona if we were so full of the Holy Spirit that atmosphere shifted because of the very presence of God in our lives? That healings took place just by us walking in a room because of the very presence of God in our lives, because the Holy Spirit was so full in us that his work would go forth just by allowing his presence to be full in us. Amen. Have your way this morning. You provide the fire. I'll provide the sacrifice. You provide the spirit. You provide the fire, I'll provide the sacrifice, 
spirit I will open up inside Fill me up, God Fill me up, God Fill me up, God Fill me How many of you that's your prayer this morning? Fill me up, God Fill
this morning till I overflow. I wanna run over. This is the confidence that we have in you. That if we ask anything according to your will, you hear us. And because you, we know that you hear us, we know that we have the petition that we desire of you. And right now our petition is, fill us up all the way until we're running over, dear Lord God. I pray, Heavenly Father, we're soaking, we're saturated with your Holy Spirit, Heavenly Father. You are the God of more than enough and David declared in Psalms 23 that his cup runs over, dear Lord God. So I thank you, Lord, in the lives of everybody here that you're running over, that you're running over, that you're running over, that you're running over. In Jesus' mighty and matchless name, let everybody who agrees say amen. Amen and amen. Amen. Amen, amen. You may be seated. Amen. 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 Till I... Overflow. That's, that's a great state to live in. Yes. I'm overflowing. Yes. You have moved beyond all my needs being met. Yes. So I'm in a situation where I got enough for me and everybody else. Everybody. Everybody. I want to challenge you. Don't let anything get in the way of you living yes. in the overflow. Yes. Don't begin to think so small. Don't begin to think about what you're worried about, what others think. Yes. You know, it's so funny because I posted a picture on Facebook. Cause, uh, so we landed in uh, Frankfurt, right? Had the longest layover ever, 10 hours. And I can't sit in the airport 10 hours. I'm, I'm just not wired like that. Pray for a brother. So we get the train. And we, we got into the city, we get a cab, and, and we're riding around, and we see everything, and, and it was really Jack and Tim, and, and then, you know, I'm excited. So we were in this, in this uh, taxi, and as we pulled up, next to this, we were, it was a reflection in, in a building, in the car. And, and I, I was just, I don't know, maybe I'm 12 years old. I'm like, look, there's our reflection. And I turn around to Tim and, and Jack, and to, to tell them to look in the mirror, they sleep. And I posted it. And some of y'all was like, ooh, you in trouble. Because Jackie's mouth was wide open. <laughs> and I laughed because I got their permission before I posted it. I ain't no fool. I've been married 37 years. I ain't crazy. Might look like it, but I'm not. But uh, my, my point is this. Is that <laughs> it's so funny because I knew some of you guys are serious. Haven't y'all realized me and Jackie don't care right now? We don't care. I'm not going to let thoughts of others yeah. hinder with the overflow of God in my yeah. life. Yeah. Now, that's a small example, yeah. but, but I'm serious. Yeah. Yeah. It's a mindset. I have a therapist. Yeah, Bishop Tony. I have a therapist because I want to make sure there's nothing. Because, see, here's the thing. See, I can see, Sean, I can see the speck in your eye. Mandy, I can see the speck in your eye. Elder, as much as I love you. Elder, elder, I see your speck. Lawson's, I can see your speck too. I can't get to see it. 
as as anointed Mr. Entrepreneur himself, Entrepreneur of the Year, Mr. All That, I can see your spec. Letty, I can see your spec. I can see everybody's spec, but I can't see my beam. So let me submit myself to somebody can call me on my junk. Call me on my stuff. Let me have somebody that can, that can get in my ear. Somebody that knows how to dig and ask the right questions. Because, see, I can sit here and say everything as well. But, see, the mind, I'm going to tell you about the heart. The heart is deceitful. You can fool yourself. See, the enemy been watching me since I was a little boy. I was a little boy. I was a little boy. And he knows. Some things I just don't know. So I need some outside help. I need somebody to really speak. I need somebody to help me. Because I'm going to tell you something. You know what I'm committed to? Fill me up. I want to overflow. I, I need that overflow in my life. Amen. I do. That's me. Okay, that's Amen. me. So all this other stuff, Amen. everybody thinking and what everybody's popular, I don't care. Because everything that's popular right now is about to go the way of the dinosaur. Okay? It ain't going to even be around anymore. I don't know. Some of y'all, I, I saw people have a fit when a black man got elected president. Came apart. So mad he won a second term. People got upset for Donald Trump. People got upset about Biden. What was our governor? The one we recalled? No, we didn't recall. Try Newsom, Newsom, Olsom, whatever. My point is this. I'm not against government. We need government. You got to vote and all that. Okay, pray about all that. But my point is this. Don't put your whole life, unless you're called to that, don't put your whole life into that. Yes, focus on him. I have a calling on my life. You got a calling on your life. Can't get in, I can't, I can't. She bugged me for 17 days together. Yeah, was a couple of times she was irritating me. And I know I irritated her because she was telling me. <laughs> love, anyway, love you guys, love you guys. Who is here for the very first time? You've never been at a service at New Day. I'm not going to ask you to stand up or anything like that, but I do want to know who you are. If you can just lift your hand, please. If this is your very first time. Welcome, welcome. Welcome. Amen. Welcome. Amen. Raise your hand up again, please. Welcome. On this side, raise your hand again, please. Yeah, raise your Welcome. hand one more time. Raise your hand. I know somebody on this side. I want to make sure. No, it's just yeah. Amen. 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 Make sure, yeah. Our ushers are giving you guys our first time guest card. I'm going to ask you a great, a big thing, a big thing, a big thing. Can you please complete the card? I know that's asking a lot. Please complete the card, and then after service, we're going to dismiss you guys. You're going to take the completed card back to our Connection Center because we have a special gift just for you guys. It's our way of saying thank you for worshiping with us at New Day. Amen? Amen? Amen. And so my name is Tony Dunn. I'm the senior pastor here at New Day. I'm also the bishop over the New Day Global Network of Churches, okay? We have 28 churches on five continents, okay? So that's often we're out, my wife and I are out and about. This is my wife, Jackie. Jackie, you want to say hi to everybody? Good morning, everyone. It's so blessed to see you guys. I missed you. You know, my eye was just like trying to reach out and trying to get connected and trying to stay in touch with what everybody was doing. So I missed you guys, but I'm so glad to be home and it's a blessing being here. And for you guys that are online, we want to connect with you. We want to find out if you have any questions. We want anything, any information you want from us. Text New Day Connect at 94000. We'll be happy to share with you. Amen. So if you want to know more about Jesus, Holy Spirit, about our church, if you want to join the church, yes. we love our online community. Thank you for tuning in again as Jackie said New Day Connect one word New Day Connect to 94000 amen amen, amen. it's so good amen. to see you guys can everybody stand please you don't have to hug one another but turn around wave and say welcome to New Day Okay, my eyes still adjusting. Bow your heads, please. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come before you with grateful hearts, thankful for this opportunity to hear from you, dear Lord God. Father, we just sang a song, Fill Me Up. And that's my prayer, Lord, is that you will fill us up today with your word, with understanding, with wisdom, with clarity, with direction, Heavenly Father, and with transformation. I just pray that there's a spirit of willingness on this congregation to be more and more committed to you in a way that you desire us to be committed, Father God. Let us move from self to death to that resurrection where we have renewed minds. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.
Amen. So, it's good to be back with you guys. I really, really, and I mean it sincerely, we did miss you. The title of today's sermon is Fine Dining. Fine Dining. Now, my diet influences my destiny. My diet influences my destiny. Now, here's a picture. This is what a lot of us eat. And you know what your destiny is if you keep eating this, right? Now, they want you to keep eating this. Let, let, me, let me prove it to you because they, they know how to get us. Now, when you think of McDonald's, what two colors come to mind on the logo? When you think of Taco Bell, what colors? KFC, El Pollo Loco. What do they know? Colors. Psychologically attract you to something that's not good for you. Now, it's expedient, especially in our culture, because we like everything fast. I need it now. I'm in a hurry. I think the last at least 30 times I've eaten McDonald's, I was late for some, and I was rolling, and I was hungry. I was sliding in a minute, two cheeseburgers, no onions, small fry, because I know them fries ain't good for me, but I am hungry. And I get that Coke with all that sugar, but I know I need that Coke to wash down them fries. But I don't want to go to this meeting hungry. We need to be careful of that. Now... Um, there's a steak place, I'm not going to say the name of it, but it's, they just opened up one in California. So Jack and I had gone to, uh, I think it was first, uh, Arizona. And, and uh, we found a hotel, and across the street from the hotel was this nice steak place. And we went there, just never been there before, and oh my God, that ribeye was the boom! Anyway, I was like, God, this is so good, it's so good, it's so good. And it wasn't because I was hungry, it was because it was a good steak. And then we did a wedding, we, uh, we went to marry um, the, the FBI people um, in um, Kentucky. Yeah, and so while we're in Kentucky on the way back to the airport, guess what? Found another one. Oh, that steak was great. So I had to go to Houston for some training with, so Sean, Minister Sean and Minister Quita went with us. And I said, hey, I found that same restaurant in Houston, that same chain. Got there, that steak was horrible. <laughs> and and I, I sat there and told Minister Sean and Minister Quita how good the steak was going to be, and it, it wasn't. My cousin came, and he was kind of looking at us like, I don't know why you ordered that. <laughs> it, 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 wasn't, it wasn't that good. Okay, and so when Minister Sean, I, I, I saw it. I saw it. Look in his eyes. I know him. I know. I know him well enough. He looked at me. He's like, "That poor child. That poor man. He don't know what's up. <laughs> he don't know good eating." So he decided to take me to it. Next slide. Next picture, please. To a place that was more fine dining. I'm not going to name this place either, but there's a few of them around. And um, um, yeah, it's in Costa Mesa. But anyway, let's keep moving. Uh, next slide, please. <laughs> and of course, there are the chefs. Now, you think about these guys versus, uh, may I take your order, please? Okay, two with no onions. I'm sorry, she want onions on one of them? I'm sorry, what else do you want? She said no tomato. Okay, so there's a big difference <laughs> in those two restaurants, Amen. And those two chefs, the ones that's doing the cooking, hallelujah. That guy gets a salary. The other guy gets paid by the hour. Next one, please. And so, of course, if you can imagine, um, you guys had that experience. Of, many of you have had the experience of fine dining. There's such a big difference. Eating something that's really nice, nice ambiance, just, just, just nice food, nice people. Oh, it's just nice. In fact, in this particular restaurant, let me give you the mission statement, Okay. They say, blank, blank, blank is a restaurant. We aspire to create, uh, i supposed to put that up. Please tell me you got that one. There it is. We aspire to create the finest experience for our guests by combining the highest quality steaks and seafood with exceptional service in a cosmopolitan and entertaining atmosphere. I worked at McDonald's. Quality, service, and cleanliness. QSC, that's our motto. I still remember that. I was a Mac manager. <laughs> we, we, we didn't have a mission statement like this one, okay? Big difference between fast food and, fat and, and fine dining. Now, uh, a couple of things here. Now, just hear me on this. The quality of your d diet determines the quality of your health. We know that, right? But there is an even higher quality diet that we should be eating. And I'm talking about your spiritual diet. Now, this diet I'm speaking of now determines your spiritual destiny. Psalms 34, verse 8, King James Version says this, okay? Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed are the man that trusteth in him. Now, here's the thing, too. When we taste and see that the Lord is good, I want you to think about this. 80% of all diseases come from 
Stress. Now, you keep eating the wrong foods, you're going to die that way too. You can also say stressed out. You can die that way too. 80% of de diseases come from stress. So our lack of faith is what increases stress levels within us. Generally, a lot of our physical ailments are due to a, just a lack of faith and a stress because you can't have the, the stress and the faith. They don't go together. So it's not so much what you're eating, it's what's eating you. Think about it for a moment. What's eating you? Look at Psalms 23, verse 5. Psalm 23, verse 5. And when you guys were singing, fill me up, I really thought about this because I knew this was part of today's message. Verse 5 says this, Psalms 23, 5, King James again, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Can you imagine what kind of table that is that the Lord is preparing for you? I mean, get a visual for that for a moment. What is the Lord, what would the Lord be feeding you? How would he want you to eat? Now, I'm speaking... Spiritual food, of course, but even if we talk about, think about natural food, what would the Lord want you to be eating? And look at, look at this too. In the presence of mine enemies. See, a lot of times when we face with a stressful situation with enemies, we go for the comfort food. Girl, I'm stressed. Where my Snickers? Girl, I, I'm about to give me some hog and dos. Oh, baby girl, he left you? I'm going to run by the store. I'm going to get us a butter pecan pound cake, and then I'm going to come on by, girl. We're just going to sit down. Y'all sit there and eat the whole half gallon. <laughs> Ain't no faith in that. And it's the same thing when we allow ourselves to get stressed. So in the midst of your enemies, all hell is breaking loose. God still wants to nourish you. I've learned just to look for it. And a lot of times, and you know, there's just several ways that he feeds me. And this is just, just me. I'll get steel. And I would get a scripture so clear in my mind, it was though as, it was though as like it was an HD. And I'll go to it, and the Lord will speak. That's how he speaks to me. And I got a whole collection of that. And sometimes I have people that would speak to me prophetically. And I do my best to record it. And once I record it, I transcribe it, I print it out. I got a whole notebook of prophetic words. And I just go back and allow those to refresh me. And the way Paul told Timothy, he said, Timothy, this is how you engage your spiritual warfare. Think about the words, the prophetic words that were spoken over you. So I've learned to live by the prophetic. I love that. Now, some people say they went out the apostles, fine. You live without it. I'm living with it. So when somebody comes to me and says, thus said the Lord, I listen. And only two or three times somebody has been wrong. God bless them, whatever. They were trying. I appreciate the, uh, you know, uh, yeah, but, I'm, I, but you, you, I'm, I got to stay open to what God is trying to feed me, especially in the presence of mine enemies. And right now, when you think about the gas prices, <laughs> that's an enemy. You think about inflation, that's an enemy. You guys, maybe you missed your opportunity to sell that house because it looked like the market about to turn a little bit. I mean, I, you know what I'm saying? Inflation, all that. that, can, that can be, we can look at that, especially as Americans, as being our enemies. Now, if you're in Ukraine right now, Russia's your enemy. It's a whole different level. Amen? But in the midst of that, God still wants you to eat properly. So that stress food and comfort food, that unhealthy stuff, calling your girlfriend about your marriage, and she had three and she ain't got one now. That ain't the wisest thing. I know y'all been tight for a long time, but that, that's just not, um, that's not the wisest choice to be eating right then. I remember when we first got married, um, we were married in just a few weeks, maybe a month or something. And I don't know, man, Jack, it was just, just, it just wasn't feeling right. Like maybe we made a mistake. Nobody said nothing. I could just feel that tension. And I remember you called your friend, your dear friend from a long time, and, and she did something that was so amazing because Jackie said, kind of come see you. And she says, no. She's, well, she's about three years older than you, Bernadette, about three years older. And she said, no, 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 you married. No, you stayed and you worked that out. See, that's what kind of friends some of us need. Girl, come on, man. I told you, it wasn't nothing, no way. He ain't going to do nothing but clean buses. He ain't going to be nobody. She didn't do that. And so the same thing with the Word of God. We need to allow scriptures that feed us. Many of you guys, most of the scriptures that you have memorized are prosperity scriptures. So when you get adversity, you don't have any adverse scriptures. Nothing to help you get there. That's why, that's why a dog returns to his vomit. You go right now. Think about vomit for a moment. I know it's gross. It's in 2 Peter. But the Bible talks about don't go back to that stuff you got delivered from. Now, here's the thing. When you take in food and it doesn't agree with you, and I'm sorry, ladies. I don't mean to gross you out today. All of a sudden, your body's like, get this up out of me. This ain't good. It get this out of me. And all of a sudden, woo, it comes back up, right? Right? It's gross, right? Now, for you to get rid of something that's not good, you go, and then you will go back to what your body said was toxic, and you don't eat that. 
You're going to get back in that relationship that you know ain't no good? Why do we go back to I, I Help me understand that. It didn't work the first time, the second or the third time. And you pray for deliverance, and then you're going to go back to that? Why would you eat something? Why would you partake of something that's not good? But that's what a lot of us do. Before I move on, I really want you to see this. The state that's the poorest of the 50, where the, the most poverty is Mississippi. Okay? This is fact. The state that has the most, and please hear me, don't, don't laugh. I'm serious. That has the most overweight people is Mississippi. And when I was younger, I, you know, I would see somebody overweight, and I think they eat a lot. It's not that they eat a lot. They eat unhealthy. Not like they're greedy, but then if you can only afford that 99-cent burrito at the 7-Eleven or down in Mississippi at the Stop and Go, then that's what you're going to keep eating. And then what is little Johnny going to eat? You're going to take him to McDonald's with the $1.99, the Happy Meal. And, and that's because that's all you can afford. And that's going to work adversely against your body. We have to eat healthy, spiritually, because we do the same thing. A lot of us that's poor in spirit is because we have a poor spiritual diet. A lot of times we like what's popular, and what's popular is not always healthy. So let me tell you, when you see something swelling up, it's, oh, that's growing, it's happening. Swelling is usually the indication of an infection. What's happening over here? Now, that's some good music. They got a lot of good musicians that ain't saved. How do you, Ben? I was watching you. Ben, ben loves the Lord. He loves the guitar, the bass too, don't he? Ben is like, oh, and today, I guess, I don't know, it's because your wife was over here today. You was on a whole nother level. Me and my baby. I saw you, man. That's my honey, baby. Yeah. We worshiped in the law together today. No, I'm, I'm playing. But, but no, Ben was on one. I saw him. And I seen you before, but today you was a little extra. And Tanisha, that's my baby. Look at my baby. Ain't she fine? Ain't she fine? Anyway, so <laughs> it's cool. It's cool. And, and so here's the thing, too. So some of us, we get excited, and, and, but that, you, you're not discerning. You need something that's going to sustain you when all hell is breaking loose. Because I'm going to tell you something. This. See, the Lord knows how to deliver the righteous and then keep the godly under subjection. It tells us that in 2 Peter. You know, so I, that's why I don't get concerned, like all this gas prices and who the president and they overturn Roe versus Wade and all. Everybody getting all upset. If you notice, I'm chill. I'm looking for the open door. Father, guide me because I know all hell is going to break loose in America. Whatever is going to happen. Don't confess it. Don't put it in air. Look, let me tell you something. I read the Bible. I know the direction we're going in, okay? So I'm not going to pray against the prophetic and what God has declared. I'm going to pray for divine guidance to get me through it because I'm, I'm looking for deliverance. I'm looking for you. You just, just walk. God, show me. I know what, 1,000 at my left, 10,000 at my right. Show a brother the direction I need to go in. And so getting into the Word, getting into the Word really helps me during that time of adversity because it's coming. The day of the Lord is coming. Now, how I survived that is based on what I have knowledge of. So I'm thinking about the people in Mississippi and what they're eating. Have you ever wondered what Jesus ate? Glad you asked. Go with me, please, in John chapter 4. I know it's just been bugging. What did Jesus eat? I wonder what was Jesus eating. What do you think, girl? What do you think? Anyway, John chapter 4, verse 31. Now, I've been on the Samaritan lady for a while now, okay? Back on the Samaritan lady. Now, remember, Samaritans, the Jews didn't like them. They were like third-class citizens. You had the Romans on top, the Jews were next, where Jesus was, and then you had the Samaritans, okay? Jesus comes across the Samaritan lady, and she's like, why are you even talking to me? Now, Jesus was going from Jerusalem back up to Galilee. The Bible says in John 4 that he was tired. He sat by the well. Nobody was around except him and the Samaritan woman. They began to engage one another and talk. This woman realized who Jesus was, and she had an immediate transformation. Now, most of us don't have a transformation. We have a progression. It takes a while. But this lady, bam, got it and, and, and was, was just on a whole nother level. Now, the disciples are going to the city to buy food, and they come back. Now, look at verse 31. Here we go, John 4, 31. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging Jesus, Rabbi, eat something. 32, Jesus replied, I have a kind of food you know nothing about. Now, what was Jesus eating? What was Jesus eating? Now, Jesus was talking about the Samaritan woman. Because he had just ministered to her, and it was, had a, she just shifted. She got a whole new identity. 
She was a woman that had five husbands. None of them worked out. Now she was just living with a man. She was at her lowest point. And he's excited. He's like, I got a food. I just got fed. Lady had a shift in her mindset. 33, verse 33. Did someone bring him food while we were gone? The disciples asked each other, what is he talking about? What is he saying? They didn't get it. But 34, Jesus explained, look, my nourishment comes from doing the will of God. So my question to you, New Day, and everybody online, where are you getting your nourishment from? Is it the will of God? Or is it your culture? And you can tell if it's your culture because just think about how you say something. When you see a crazy situation, you go like, girl, I'm come from, they don't know. It, you, it's not about where you come from anymore. I thought you've been delivered from that. Well, see, in my family, Paul, God told Abraham, get away from your country. And some of us just love our country so much. My country, tears of thee, sweet land of liberty. Yes, I love the land I live in, and I'm going to pray. But then there are some things about this that are not kingdom. And I got to learn to deviate and separate the two. I do. And he says, get away from your kinfolk. There are some things my dad and everybody that's familiar with. I got some cousins down in Louisiana. I'm telling you, I was eight when they left. When I left Louisiana, I'm 60 years old right now. And I get around them. They still talk the same, still act the same. And if y'all are watching, my bad, but it's the truth. I had somebody tell me, Yo, hey, Bishop Tony, you need to come on back down here and do a revival. No, I don't. Y'all told me the word. It's just a matter of you being willing to transform. Where are you getting your nourishment from? But that's how we Baptists do it. Show me a Baptist in the Bible other than John the Baptist, and he wasn't denominationally Baptist. Help me, please. <laughs> For the Methodist. Show me a Methodist. Show me a Presbyterian. Now, now I'm serious. It's about the kingdom of God. But we get so hooked in it. So what is your nourishment? Where are you getting it from? You okay? Where is that coming from? What is that? Meaning what? Say it loud, I'm black and I'm proud. I am. I'm happy. I'm fine. And then God bless James Brown and Jesse Jackson. I am somebody. Okay, cool, Jesse. The Bible tells me I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Nothing against Jesse. Don't, 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 please don't get me wrong, okay? Nothing, not, not at all. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not speaking ill to anybody. But what I'm saying is that at some point there has to be some growth. Where are you getting your nourishment from? Jesus said his nourishment comes from doing the will of God, who sent me, sent me. See, you, you wonder, the, the people are so amazed. It's like, how do you get so much energy over there overseas? I was sent, and it's my nourishment. I land, and I'm good. I go to sleep, don't get me wrong. I, you know, I rest. And you know, put the picture of Jackie, you know, sleep, man. Tim got me sleep too, okay? I do go to sleep. But here's my point. Who sent me? And, and I get my nourishment from finishing his work. Where are you getting your nourishment from? Young people, where are you getting your nourishment from? The latest clothes. Because I'm going to tell you something. When things are not going your way and you start to veer, your nourishment ain't from God. Your nourishment for whatever it is that's bugging you. Your nourishment is, is and, and I've, I've had to learn to do this. Because, see, I used, my nourishment used to come from my, my pain when I was abused as a kid. The things my daddy said to me. The things he did to me. And I'm telling you all right now, because in about two weeks, my mama coming, I ain't going to be talking about my daddy no more. <laughs> I'm telling you, get it all in right now. <laughs> Sister Dunn going to be sitting right there. And that's okay. She don't need some earplugs because y'all too loud. I already know it, and it's all good. And every now and then, uh, Marquita, I'm going to need you to sing a hymn. Every now and then, I'm going to need you to take us way back, okay? All right, just every now and then. So mama can kind of ease on into this, because this is a whole new flow for her right now, okay? And baby, when are you going to put your suit on? <sighs> <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> all right. So where are you getting your nourishment from? Where are you getting it from? Now, Jesus, if we're Christ-like, I think we should also be getting our nourishment from doing the will of God. But we first have to know what his will is. I know what your will is because your will is often tied and it was ever popular, whatever's going on right now. It is. It really is because I could tell by the things that the people in Africa pray for versus the things that we pray for. And it's always related on what's popular, what's in the culture at the time. It always is.
It always is. It always is. Let's keep reading. Verse 35. You know the saying, this is Jesus speaking, four months between planting and harvest. But I say, wake up and look around. And I think that's what he's saying to us right now. Wake up and look around. Wake up. Wake up. Who is he talking to right now? I mean, I mean, talking to us, to the church. No, stop being so holy. I mean, right now, who in, in, in the Bible, right now, who is this conversation with? The disciples. He's telling his disciples to wake up and look around. These dudes been walking with him and seeing miracles, you know, walking on water and Peter getting out the boat, and he's still telling them to wake up and look around. What is it that we're missing, brothers and sisters? What is it that we're missing? He said, the field's already ripe for harvest. Do you know how many people don't know Jesus and we walk right past them every day. And for most of them, the only Jesus they're going to see is the one in us. We're coming out to Johannesburg Airport um, on the way home. So we came from Zambia, and we, we come out, you know, the, the international terminal. And you guys have been with us, you, uh, other airports too. You walk out, even at LAX, and there's everybody waiting for those international guests to come in. So we're coming up. And, of course, in Africa, you got everybody wants me to take their taxi. You know, they got to make money. It's a hustle. So they, I don't know. They see me and come running. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and the guy asked me, he says, um, 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 where are you going? That's what he said. Where are you going? I said, I'm going home. And, you, and he says, do you have someone coming to pick you up? I said, yeah, Jesus. <laughs> yeah? I said, yeah, yeah, Jesus. He's going to take me home. My home is not here. It's in heaven. In fact, when you die, where are you going? Got him. Got him. Got him. Remember another guy in the airport? He come up. He want. He needs to borrow. He wants some money. Whatever. Got him too. Jehovah's Witness. I had to turn him around, show him some stuff. Oh, I never saw that in the scripture. Look up, people. Wake up and look around. Wake up and look around. Look around. Look around. They're all around us. That's what he's telling us. That's where he's getting his nourishment from. Where are we getting our nourishment from? Ooh, Lord, I just need another another two thousand dollars for this down payment for this car. Ooh, Jesus. Okay, and I, I, my, my credit go up 30 points. I can get a lower interest rate. Okay, cool. Believing for higher credit rating? Cool. Okay, I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm with you with that. I want you to get the car you desire. That's awesome. Well, I, I need about another $10,000 down for this, this um, 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 house, my house, okay? And, and I understand, and that's a blessing, you know? Uh, I remember one time, Jack and I, we had finally got some money saved. And my wife comes to me and tells me a co-worker needed that exact amount we had saved and for their down payment. God, I didn't want to get her money up. We were so broke, so busted, and finally we got a little bit, a little bit. Sister Kathy was just a little bit, $3,000. Just a little bit saved. You say, that ain't much money. When you ain't had nothing, that's a lot of money. And we gave it to them. But my point is this, and they, they were celebrating, they were thanking the Lord and all that. But my point is, wake up and look around. The field's already ripe for harvest. That's what nourished Jesus, was nourishing you. 36, please. The harvesters are paid good wages, and the fruit they harvest is, here's a harvest, people brought to eternal life. Who's going to be in heaven because of you? Minister Sean Arby, can you stand up, please? He thought enough of me while we were sitting there eating that steak in Houston at that steakhouse, and I'm not going to give you the name of it, okay? And you said... Let me hook my pastor up. <laughs> we get back, and he calls me. Hey, Friday night, don't do nothing. Me and Queen, call it me and Q, <laughs> we, gonna, we, gonna, we want to take you and Miss Jackie out. And they take us to a very fine establishment. And honestly, God, I saw the prices. I'm like, what the heck? He's a detective. <laughs> she just got a promotion. They bought me. I guess they got money. Because I did the math. I'm like, this is going to be about $500. <laughs> I ordered the steak that I wanted. Yeah. It was so tender. I'm recalling it now. <laughs> and I just want to publicly say thank you, man. <laughs> for hooking a brother up. Can we give him a hand? Because he hooked me up. Thank you, sir. Thank you. He took me someplace I've never been. Can you take people to a place they've never been by sharing Christ with them? He told me about the restaurant. Y'all always tell people about everything that's going on. 
There's a new, new, new um, um, soul food place in Riverside. I mean, all y'all been talking about it. You know, and what happens with all the soul food places, and they need your help, Malik, because we notice that they, they can stay in business for about six months. <laughs> and you go back and it's closed. God bless them. And then I've learned this too. If you haven't, and I'm, stay with me. I'm going to do a right turn real quick. It's a book called E-Myth that really helped me. I don't know. It was so long ago. And E-Myth means entrepreneur myth. You think just because somebody can cook, they should become a business person. That's what we call a practitioner. You're great with cooking. Just keep cooking. There are some people that know how to run a business and maybe get them to coach you to help you. Get your accounting and all that so you don't be trying to, you know, fry the fish and still do the books. And maybe that'll help you stay in business. But I, I, I just noticed over time that there are so many people that they don't last. And I think if we really knew Jesus, and young people, I really want you to hear me, okay, hear me. It would be great to get to know him now, especially at this age. I wish I had. I'd have saved, I'd have, I'd, a lot of stuff I went through, I wouldn't have had to have gone through because I had more knowledge of spiritual things. And it was my lack of knowledge. The Bible says, my people are destroyed for the lack of my people go into captivity because they have no knowledge. So the Bible tells us. The enemy has access because we have no knowledge. So if we can really help one another, I know we go to church. You guys know people that go to church, and you know their lives. They're still sinning. They're still out there. They still can't break free. They don't have the word. They got a good time. Woo, it was the Spirit was there today. That wasn't the Holy Spirit. Because nothing is transformed. When the Holy Spirit shows up, there's transformation. The earth was dark and void and without form. And then the Holy Spirit came and then it became inhabitable. There was a man named Jacob. But when the Holy Spirit hit him, he became Israel. There's a shift. There was Abram who became Abraham. There's a shift when the Holy Spirit shows up. And I'm talking about a transformative work. A transformative work. So fine dining. What's your nourishment? What you eating right now? What you eating right now? I'm in church right now. Okay, I need you to get into the Word this week. You can go back over these notes. You can. You can. Get into the Word. Let the Word get into you. Get into your Bible. Open it up. Take a Bible break. People have said to me, man, you know that Word so backwards and forwards. But let me tell you something about the Word. I was reading the Word before I became a pastor. I had a daily routine where I fed myself every day. Even at my job, I would take my lunch break. People know where's Tony in his car reading the Bible? I kept a pocket New Testament. I just had to let the word get into me. And so when all hell was breaking loose, now getting the word don't mean, it ain't going to stop from hell breaking loose, but I tell you what, it keeps, it, I, I'm still standing here. I'm still standing here. Fine dining. What are you eating? Bow your heads. Father in heaven, we thank you for your word. We thank you that it's alive, it's a living thing, and it will not return into your void. And it shall accomplish that which you please. And Father, I thank you that we would be like Jesus. Our nourishment will be doing your will, your will for our lives, Heavenly Father. Now, we can say to people, I have food that you know nothing about. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. Right now, I want to do something. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, maybe you know about him, but you don't know him. If you don't know him, lift your hand, please. Lift your hand, please, if you don't know him. Amen. And you guys that are online, I want to give you the same. I cannot see you, but I want, to, I want you to do this. If you don't know him and you would like to, right now I want you to repeat after me, please. In fact, everybody in the audience, if you can re repeat after me also so they can hear you, please. Okay. Dear God, Dear God I, come before you. I come before you. I recognize, I recognize my, need for a savior. my need for a Savior. I have sinned, I have sinned. And, I need forgiveness. and I need forgiveness. And Jesus came. Jesus came. He died. And he rose to forgive me for my sins. I receive you now, Jesus, as my Savior. And I want you to be my Lord. So, dear Father, I thank you that I'm now saved. Because your word says, whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I'm calling upon the name of the Lord right now. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, I need you to text me, New Day Connect, one word to 9400, and one of our amazing ministers get back with you and get some information to you. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thanks for joining us. We pray that you are blessed by our worship experience. 
Now, this is the part in the service where you can participate through your giving. Here at New Day, we have three ways to give. First, you can text us. Text New Day Corona to 77977 and follow the instructions in your text message. Or you can visit us online. Visit newdaycorona.org and click the giving tab. Lastly, you can mail your gift to 1114 West Ontario Avenue, Corona, California, 92882. Here at New Day, we also have an offering confession. Let's declare it together. Father, we honor you as we present to you your tithes and our offerings. You are the authority over all we have. We give an obedience to you, O God, who causes all grace to abound towards us. For we have sufficiency in all things and abundance for every good work. There is no lack in our lives. For we give to the poor and support the work of missionaries. Therefore, as we sow our financial seed, we thank you for the harvest of wisdom to manage our financial affairs, financial favor, oil and mineral rights, jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits and promotions, favorable settlements and rebates, the return of what's lost or stolen, scholarships and grants, increased sales and commissions, the miracle of debt cancellation, favorable financial surprises, every bill and every debt paid. We declare that we not only have enough, but we have more than enough. We declare that we have enough to promote the gospel of Jesus Christ throughout the whole earth. For we are blessed to be a blessing, and we will care for the widows and orphans. In Jesus' name, amen. Sacrifice. You provide the Spirit. I will open up inside. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me. How many of you that's your prayer this morning? Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill Sacrifice. 